Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, as promised, we're going to try some airplane stuff, though I am aware that I might have trouble with the runway. I had trouble with the runway before, so we will see. But also, I did not have the Mark II parts unlocked yet, that's under Effective Space Planes. So I spent some of the science that we got around Jupiter to start off on those, because, well, they just look good. And also, I wanted to get, which was it, a refined rocketry, because I'm somewhat interested in this uh, J2T, the toroidal aerospike. So, yeah, maybe we can make use of that. Not too sure about, well, those are non-RP0 and they, they look dubious anyway. It's really just this one engine. I really wish it would come with, come with some other possibilities for upgrades to other engines like the RL-10s, but I'm not sure. I think that's mostly coming from mature Hydrolox engines uh, and that we are not unlocking right now, so we'll need to. We're actually going straight for nuclear propulsion as far as that's concerned. Um, I do see a line from refined rocketry to whatever we have here, mature stage combustion and advanced rocketry. I Well, there's a Merlin series there. Not the Merlin, not the right look for a Merlin, but and I think that's a uh, 1B, but they have the configurations for the other ones down there. Anyway, so that was done. I also used some upgrade points and spent some upgrade points to increase the build speed in the SPH, right? Because before we had only 0.4, uh, right now we have one build point per second, so that costs a bit, and then into the space plane hangar. I had to unlock some parts to make this all work out. I mean the general point is that we're not gonna have the most wonderful space planes to begin with. We will try to get to space with them. But they can't carry cargo or anything so that's sad. This is an Astra space plane that I put together, and I've got an RL-10 variant with the RL-10 on the tail, uh, but that that features better thrust, but less delta V because the fuels that go into the RL-10 are hydrogen and oxygen, and they are less dense. Density is good when it comes to space plane fuels. Now to do this, I had to unlock this cockpit, the 1.25 meter inline cockpit. You might wonder why I don't use this one. And the reason is because they made it ugly. I don't know what the heck... I mean, yes, I know there are fighters that had a cockpit like that. But I don't want one. So, forget that. Um, yeah. So, inline cockpit it is. There is also this Mark 1 cockpit. This costs a lot to unlock. It's more, more than 100,000. This one can carry two. This one says rated for LEO re-entries, which is good. I sure hope they're honest about that. This one says very gentle LEO re-entries, suborbital, rated for suborbital, so I'll take that. We are just going to go suborbital for now. But yeah, that's our cockpit. We've got, uh, this is RCS fuel tank locked so that we have RCS control on the way down. And uh, you can see uh, attitude, attitude jets. They use Arizine and N204, and then we've got some RCS on the back here and here. And then there's an Arizine N204 tank, so is this. And we've got the asterisk 2. Asterisk 2, right? Let me double check that that's the right configuration. Yes, it is. So, asterisk 2 and also advanced Gemini lander engines because just the asterisk 2 doesn't give enough thrust. So, we've got four advanced Gemini lander engines, which is good because they throttle. So, in fact, uh, we can action group some stuff. Let's, uh, let's have the jets on zero, toggle engine and then toggle the Asterisk engine, and then toggle the Advanced Gemini Lander engines. Okay, uh, we are going to test this without any person inside, any Kerbal. That's why we have the Thor Avionics unit around here. And uh, just for reference, let's make sure we've got the aerodynamic thing. And let's say we drain half of the kerosene going up or something like that. You can see how the center mass goes. Then they'll start draining this tank here. So you can see how the center of mass goes there. And then draining this tank here. And then we use the RCS fuel. And that's where it ends up. 
So, yeah. Oh, uh, th th I forgot. There's a tiny little bit of fuel here, too, that it would drain. But it doesn't definitely doesn't go behind the center of the lift. So that is the configuration of this. The issue is yaw control on the way down might be tough. It's already got a pretty big vertical stabilizer, but I still don't get the feeling that that uh, far is particularly happy with the situation. Oh, and there's also a bit of fuel in these. But altogether, those don't make that much of a difference. Long landing gear, only because the other option for landing gear is this. And this small landing gear was way... It looked too small to me. I was afraid of scratching the tail with these. So, none of that. I did install tweak scale. I had to because we don't have enough intake sizes. As it is, I still don't think we we have enough area for these jets. These are the Avon RB146 turbojets and they are the ones used on the English Electric Lightning which I like and also because it's a 1950s 1960s thing so that's what we're starting off with. Um, yeah. Uh, we've got 0.26 area here and that says needs 0.4 but we'll see how it works we're trying it out uncrewed so yeah no crew and maybe we'll need some more area I, I guess we could just try and try and resize it hold on top uh, to top. just increase like this so this, this is what the tweak scale is for let's say 0.4 there we go It's good enough. The thrust weight ratio off the ground is more than one, so this thing can go straight up if it wanted to. All right, we'll try this. We'll try this. Well, the thing is, we're building a plane for like 90 days or so, and it seems like a good idea to build a rocket at the same time because we can. The VAB and the SPH are different after all. So I decided that we could do with a redo of our spaceport and so this is Spaceport 2 now, and, you know, call it like Salyut 2 kind of thing. The, the, functionally, it's a lot like the Salyut uh, space stations. And uh, here we've got the food, water, and oxygen. We now have extra docking ports here, and I've moved all the solar panel re on this side. We had solar panels on both sides before. I don't know if this is enough solar panel re because I tree scaled it to 200 times, uh, not 200 times, 200%. Now that I've added tweak scale, I can do that. I'm hoping that that's enough, but we'll have to see. And so we've got two additional Apollo docking systems and two propellant-only docking systems there. We've got one Apollo there and another Apollo there. And of course, the Thor avionics unit. Otherwise, uh, things are the same. This is still the Gemini adapter equipment section, which has the fuel cell. We've got additional fuel cells just in case. So yeah, that's what I want to launch, and that is 51,000 funds, so pretty expensive. And on this rocket, this is the Nico 707, not the 606. I decided to go with 7 because the boosters on the 3745, Nico 3745, are 7 engine boosters. And, um, well, sort of the same idea. We've got parachutes on the bottom. Uh, stage recovery claims that's all right, uh, 3.4 meters per second, and we've got the floats in here now, not on the outside. And again, same idea. I don't know what you think about the floats, but I think they're a good idea to save our booster engines. We've got uh, eight separatrons as well to make sure that we get well away from the second stage before it lights. I mean, is this as good as a Falcon 9 first stage? Of course not. But it could work. I think it could work. It's up to you guys in the comments to tell me why it can't work. Now, it's a pretty fat rocket. And the reason it's a fat rocket is because we're using the Saturn instrument unit here, which is 6.6 .6 meters. I, I don't know. Maybe we could use something smaller. Uh, I didn't want all the Thor avionics unit as, units as a thing. Um, this is 2 tons. There's this one. Maybe I could just use this one. Hold on, let me let me replace it. Maybe I can make a slightly thinner rocket 
and use this Saturn 1 instrument unit, but then, no, I really can't. I can't because, you know, to fit seven engines, you need a certain amount of space, right? We need seven engines on both stages to get the Delta V to uh, with buffer to make sure that we can get this payload to orbit. It's a bit heavier than our previous station, which launched on the Nico 606. So, yeah. As far as food, water, and oxygen, uh, eight crew could last 100 days, but we're not going to have eight crew on this tiny little thing. I forget if there was anything else that we should have put in here. Possibly some tools, but I don't have a uh, Kerbal Inventory System sort of uh, section right now. Anyway, we'll package it up, and altogether 83,000 funds. So, fairly expensive. The engines have been upgraded. We're using NK-31s on the second stage and NK-33s on the first stage. And instead of uh, one kilonewton thrusters, I decided to put the Gemini Lander engines as the engines on the station, so it's got a little bit more power. And what we hope to do with the station, of course, is to eventually build enough of a station to have the crew duration record of 30 days, but also uh, maybe we can add another section to the station so we have a crew count record of 10 crew. That'll take some doing though. We'll need to, well, we'll need to send crew up too. We're not sending crew up with, uh, with the station itself, of course. Okay, it looks like Spaceport 2 will be the first thing and then we'll get to try out the Astra space plane. Okay, well, yeah, this is an awkward looking rocket. This is definitely not an elegant rocket. We're gonna have to do better than this in the future, but for now, since it's here, throttle up, SAS on, and we don't need the landing bit. Okay, come on. Come on, velocity. All right. Uh, let's, let's line up. So let's get a pump on just in case. Toggle pump. And yeah, let's line up with the moon, because that's most useful. Um, something just happened. I just saw, heard a sound. Uh, well, I recall repairing the launch pad is quick, if expensive. But this really shouldn't happen. I can't revert though, otherwise we'd have to build it again and just throttle up. Ignition. I'll have to review how much randomly explode, exploding launch pads costs, though. So. And launch. Well, not the most auspicious start, of course. Trying to find the loss. Oh, steering losses. Here we go. Uh, gravity losses. And well, hold on. Let's do the staging. Let's take a look at gravity losses first. And set. Ignition. Steering losses, 4.6 meters per second. Yep. Good times. Gravity losses, though. I should keep suicide burn count down in landing. Alright, let's ditch the little fairing on top, I suppose. Looks like we have more than enough Delta V than we really need for this. I mean, probably the 606 would have been fine. Maybe even a lesser rocket. But again, we wanted some buffer just in case bad things happened. But 
perhaps in the future we'll need less buffer because our upgraded engines are more more uh, reliable than the earlier versions of the NK engines. Okay, shutting off one set of engines. Oh, I thought that was the button for it. There we go. Okay, we're at Apoapsis. Everything looks good. Should be shutting down soon. We will shut down... Uh, no, I'll bring it to orbit. I'll bring it to orbit. We won't have this stage re-enter after all. I want to be sure that this... I mean, I forget if the Gemini adapter equipment section is properly pressurized to work the Gemini lander engines, you know. It should be a service module tank, but you never know. So I want to just be doubly sure and we'll get it to orbit. And shut down. 460 kilometers by 208. That'll be a good start to a station orbit. Come on, game. Our engines worked perfectly, no problems. Alright, separation. Now let's see about these Gemini Lander engines. Ignition. Okay, they work. Alright, good. So we have 500 meters per second internal. Let's get all the things out. It looks like we're, we are recharging. No telling uh, whether the charge is Car charge consumption is going to be higher when Kerbals are on board, but we are not running the fuel cells right now, so good times. Let's activate some Commutrons. I don't know why. Oh, cannot deploy when stowed. Well, it seems to be active anyway. It's just not, ex it's not doing the animation okay so these are pretty large solar panels you'll note that the docking ports are still aligned so that they're in the gaps between the solar panels just in case who knows what kind of station we intend to build after all We'll have to see whether it can recharge itself on the daylight side after being on the nighttime side for a while. Here's Apoapsis. Let's circularize our orbit. RCS on. Make sure the RCS works. It does. We had an interesting situation where two of the Gemini lander engines did not have fuel settled, but the other two did. That's interesting. Okay, 462 by 462. Let's check the power consumption situation. Not great on that orbit, but we have to make sure that we are properly oriented with respect to the sun, so let's do that. And then we'll have persistent rotation hold that, and then we'll see whether we recharge all the way. If not, a uh, future module will have to carry bigger solar panels. Incidentally, uh, we don't really have, you know, the large solar panels yet. Uh, we are going to be unlocking a technology high power electrics that might have them, though. Okay. It's a little bit too far there. Uh, it still loses about a thousand each uh, orbit. So that's interesting. We will have to do better next time. But for now, I mean, when we need to, we can activate a fuel cell, but right now we don't need to. I should log radiation levels, maybe. Oh, science. From space just above Earth's waters. Okay, we can transmit that. Temperature? No. That's different. Take photographs. Um, film return camera from space just about, well, we have to return the film return camera, obviously. Serve biosample. This, uh, this uh, Gemini adapter equipment section has everything. Okay, well, time for an airplane. Okay, well, here we are. Remote controlled, of course, so we've got the Thor avionics unit. 
We've got the little antenna on the nose. That's a Commutron 32, by the way, because that has a 1,000 kilometer range even retracted. So that's why that's there. And of course, we don't have to extend it. Okay, well, I haven't flown this before, and I don't know how the runway is going to be. But here we go. We should have more than adequate thrust. Ooh, game is sticky. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh, hold on. Well, okay. Hmm. It's, uh. Definitely, um. <laughs> uh. Okay, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. What's with the going in on one side? But I did, uh, configure the. Oh, well, not that. Um. I think I configured the top one there. Maybe that'll help. Uh. It doesn't feel like it. Yeah, the top one is definitely configured properly. Yeah, it tends to want to go right. Hmm. Okay, um, let's go this way. I wish we had auto strutting of the landing gear here. Yeah, you know, it, it really wants to skid right. I don't see the wheels doing anything horrible. And of course they were placed with symmetry. They're not placed on the wings, by the way. They're placed on the body and tweaked, uh, which got gizmoed out. It's trying to stop it. Hold on. Break. This one seems like this is clipped into the body. They don't seem to be symmetrical, do they? These two. Okay, now obviously I did put them on with symmetry. But... Apparently symmetry doesn't work out the way I expected. That's weird. Okay, well, let's not waste funds on this. Let's recover and take a look at in the SPH. Okay, well, I think it was because I had used the gizmo to move them, and symmetry is weird sometimes when you move things like that. I've replaced it so that they look symmetrical now. I hope it's gonna stay that way this time. We lost some time, but at least no funds. Um, yep, yeah, that's the best I can say. Oh, look at that. Uh, apparently, we've got thrusters that aren't placed properly. Hmm. Okay, hold on. We can fix this too while we're here. One here and one here. Okay, maybe now it's all right. We'll see. Save and build. Seems like the game has contrived to make sure that we're going to end up using 87 days without building a rocket in parallel, but I don't want to build another spaceport mod or uh, launch another spaceport module right now because we'd have to dock it with the other spaceport and that'll occupy the whole episode. Oh, actually, I just noticed it's not gonna take 87 days to build it, it's only gonna take 8 days be re because we recovered the previous asterisk. That's good. I, I shouldn't just say asterisk because that's the engine. But Astra Space Plane. Alright, eight days, I guess we can deal with that. Okay, here we are again. Um, also, it's worth noting that we did recover that uh, first stage with the seven NK-33s. Terminal velocity of 3.6 meters per second, which is excellent. So, good deal there. 
And SAS is on, throttle is up, tires are a little bit in the runway. Um, checking the symmetry, things look proper. Alright, let's see. Go little guy, go! Oh no, no, it's going off to this side now. Um, maybe this time it's just the runway? I mean, geez. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, um... Let's idle a little bit. I'm trying to turn right here, but it's still going left. You can see even the rudder is right. Yep, uh, this direction on the rudder should definitely turn it right, but it's not. Even at this speed, it wants to turn left. Well, if the brakes on, it tends to go straight. That's nice. Oh, not so much anymore. Okay. Oh, now it's going right. Oh, uh, uh, I think something's gonna explode right here. No? Well, now it is. Great. Well, okay. I'm gonna recover that. So, yeah. I don't feel like we can do planes in this, actually. Maybe we shouldn't have unlocked the effective space planes, because somehow I doubt they're going to be effective. At least in terms of the whole runway. Well, I mean, you know, a space shuttle doesn't have to take off from, from a runway, does it? Right? Space shuttle comes back down and it just has to land. So the whole going sideways on the runway thing, not a problem for the space shuttle. I mean, well, on the landing, you really don't want it to go sideways, but you know, you'll have parachutes, you know, drag chutes and drogue chutes out the back. Yeah, maybe it'll be all right. But as far as uh, from the surface to space kind of space plane, this is not giving me much hope. Anyway, uh, your thoughts and analysis will be appreciated. We'll have high power electrics done in 14 days. At that point, uh, maybe we'll uh, try and get a new module for our station done because hopefully that'll include better solar panels. We'll take a look at that. We have an adjustment to make for our Jupiter orbiter, and then we need to sort out what type of mission we want to send to Mars. All right, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions about space planes, hopefully, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.